December the 5th. Today's a day, my first official Sunday here at First Presbyterian Church of Glasgow. Welcome all to this recorded service. Hope you enjoy the next 30 minutes. Uh, I'll enjoy being with you as will Chadwick here in a few moments, but wanna show off first a bit our, of our sanctuary, the beautiful Chrismon tree you see here, beautifully decorated. And then we'll walk over here. This um, is our second Sunday in the season of Advent. So our two Advent candles are lit, the candle of hope and the candle of peace. Very lovely. And we'll work up to the nativity scene here in the sanctuary. And uh, we're excited about, I'm excited to be back in person and live. I do want to say though, those of you that viewed the service last Sunday, thank you for that. It was a, a big turnout. We had almost 70 views. So thank you for viewing that. Thank you for viewing this one too. And so without further ado, I'm going to join my friend Chadwick and we'll fill you in on what we're doing today live. I'm ready. Well, Chadwick, glad to be back here at uh, your office at the church. Your first official Sunday back. That's right. That's and right. Welcome back, Charlie. I'm glad to be back. This welcome week. back. Well, that wasn't Charlie. Yeah. That was Cotter. Cotter, Sorry. we're close enough. <laughs> but glad to get back. You know, and I talked about in the video we did last week, it's so good to see everybody face to face. Sure. But if you can't be here face to face with us in person, we're glad to give this video uh, for you to watch for 30 minutes. But I know those who come in person are getting a real treat on December the 5th, today. Yeah, today. Some special guest artists, yes. musicians. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's exciting. We hope you can. If you can't be here today, we hope you can be here in the coming Sundays, yeah. the coming weeks. You know who's coming today in person? Yes. I know a couple. Uh, name them. I know one. Okay. Parker Evans. Parker Evans. Clarinet. Clarinet. And we have a vocalist that's yes. coming to join us today. Waylon Griffin. From Glasgow High School. I didn't know this, but Waylon is a Kentucky Governor's School for the Arts vocalist. Right. Not easy. Talented so young man. We're excited uh -huh. to have him. Absolutely. And uh, Hudson Stahl. Yes, right? we have a violinist as well. Mm -hmm. So we're excited. Yeah. So it's going to be a great day here at... First Presbyterian Church, Glasgow. Not only are people who are here in person getting a great sermon and great music from you, it's almost like a free concert. We got vocalist, clarinet, violin. So, uh, and a great sermon, which you're <laughs> going to get a taste of in a little bit as well. You'll get that. But every Sunday in person, we'll have special music. So we do hope to see you face to face. But we're glad that you're able to join us here as well. We're glad to see Or both. Or you both. can always go back and watch this later on our YouTube channel. That's true. So. That's true. We have a couple of things happening this. We had a great Christmas parade. Yes. We were in the Christmas parade. We had a float for the first time in many, many, many years. I know we used to serve when the Christmas parade would go by the church. We used to serve hot cocoa and things. But I don't really know when, if ever, we've had a, an actual float. And we had a float. This thing was top notch. Uh, Sherry uh, Hoffmeister. Well, I could name lots of names, but yeah, lots of people involved, and it was a lot yeah, of fun. So. A lot of fun putting it together. Um, I was on the float. Yes. At last night in the parade. Mm -hmm. And I was handing out candy canes. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It really we was. appreciate everybody that came out and helped mm -hmm. us. So and if you and if you're inclined to join us on a Wednesday evening, December seventeenth. Yes, sir. At six o'clock, we'll have a Christmas potluck uh -huh. and a special visitor. Yes, right? special ho ho ho, yeah. He's coming <laughs> December, uh, December 17th, Wednesday at 6 here at church. So hope you can join us then. Right. And then, of course, on the 24th. Yes. 5.30. 5.30. A brief Christmas Eve service. Right. It's usually 30 minutes or less. Right. Be beautiful, filled with music and the spoken word, and probably a couple of exciting treats. So Treats and more. more candlelight candy, service. Candlelight service. Mm -hmm. And more special musicians, probably. Right. And think. then you get to rush home, <laughs> maybe in the snow, <laughs> right. and be with your families, friends. So, so join us all this month. Mm -hmm. Come out and see us. Yeah. But since you're not with us today, we do have a special. Absolutely. We have recorded. treats for you today, yeah, too. We do. So. And one treat is a well-known 
Advent hymn that you've heard a lot of times before. It's called uh, O Come, O Come Emmanuel. Yes, and earlier I said to uh, Charlie, I said, what number is that in the hymnal? He said, nine. <laughs> so he's been a Presbyterian minister for a long That's time. Right. He knows his hymn. Every year it comes around. But so, if you're inclined, I'd, we'd love to hear. I'll share that with you now. Yeah, thank you. And I had the best seat in the house, right? Right <laughs> next door. I'm not sure I heard either. my paperclip buzzing, but hey, I got over that. And remind reminded me of other things that move around while we're. I noticed this awesome watch earlier. Yes, this is. And the patches on the sleeve of this shirt. <laughs> yes, sir. This is my good luck uh, charm watch. I've worn it every sermon I've delivered for probably the last year and a half. So. Uh, I and like sometime it. we will tell you where this came from. Right, there's a story behind uh -huh. it. Maybe next episode. Right. But speaking of sermons, I do wear every sermon, this lucky charm of mine. And uh, I've got a message to share with you today that will also have the same sermon in person. Right. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with, uh, with all of you. I'm looking forward to it too. Let's go. All right, see you in a minute. Well, thanks for viewing again this message, this uh, second Sunday of Advent message. We decided to film outside. It's a great, beautiful day for December outside. We're here in front of the church. And so uh, a beautiful setting to hear God's word today. You saw on the inside, we had our Advent candles lit. Today is the second Sunday of Advent and we will light the candle of peace in our worship service. And so those of you viewing at home, I want you to go ahead and get your home Bible out and turn it to Philippians, please. We'll be in Philippians today. And to give you time to find it, and to give me time to find it as well, um, I was gonna tell you a quick story from my days when I had my law practice. I practiced law for 10 years in Bowling Green, and I had a real estate practice. And two of my very favorite clients were, were partners in real estate ventures. Uh, they were two guys, great guys, they became great friends. I enjoyed working with them. I enjoyed talking to them. And for 10 years, uh, they were just wonderful people. Well, one of the two partners, about the same time I decided to leave the law practice, one of the two partners retired. And so he retired about the same time that I closed my office. Six months ago, I ran across a guy in Edmondson County who said, hey, Remember this guy that retired that was your client? I said, yeah. And my, this guy said, he wants you to call him. And I got his number. 
And I called them and we got caught up, you know, over the past 10 years. And it was great to talk to him and, and to hear how he's doing and enjoying retirement. And I said to him, well, how's your partner doing? And he said to me, you know, the funny thing is, he said, I thought we were best of friends. We were partners for 10 years. He said, the minute I retired, he never talked to me again. I tried to call him a few times, see how he's doing. He never returns the call. Uh, he said, I saw my partner, you know, years ago at a restaurant and he, we talked for two minutes and that was it. So I thought we were friends. And I said, I'm surprised. I thought you were friends too, but I guess not. I guess that was just a very superficial relationship the partner had with his other partner that retired. And that got me thinking about our relationships. Yes, most of ours are superficial, right? People we just pass by and say hi to. And the question is, when do we invest our hearts into somebody else? When do we invest our um, full uh, attention and, and, and our full being into somebody else? When do we go beyond the superficial? And to help us think more about it, now please join me in Philippians. We're in chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, okay? Philippians chapter 1, 3 through 11. Hear the word of God. Now, to set it up, this is a letter of Paul to the church in Philippi. Paul founded this church. Paul knew the people he's writing to. These are his friends. He knows them personally. And he writes this probably 25, 30 years after the resurrection, roughly. So here's what, here's what Paul says to this church in Philippi and people he knows very well. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. I'm going to go back and reread four verses. When I do, listen to the relationship Paul has with these friends of his in this church. Paul says, I thank my God every time I remember you. He says, I am constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. He says, it's right for me to think this way about you because you hold me in your heart. And verse 8, if you ever heard the phrase, people say, as God is my witness, <laughs> this is where it comes from. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. We read this from Paul and we discovered that these people in Philippi, this is not a superficial relationship that Paul has with these church members. These are people that he has a deep relationship with, heart to heart, and it brings him so much joy, so much peace, so much happiness to have this kind of depth of relationship. And the lesson we get today from this uh, New Testament lesson is this. Superficial relationships do not change our life for the better. They don't. But the relationships we have that are heart to heart, they're the ones that bring us great joy. So 
That was 2,000 years ago. Why should we care what it says 2,000 years ago? Why is it important to me and to you what Paul wrote 2,000 years ago? Isn't the Bible outdated? Well, some say so, but I say no. The truth that Paul gives us here is the same today. Yes, most of our relationships are superficial, right? The people that work down the hallway from us, if you're in school, the ones you sit you know, across the classroom with, uh, the people we just live down the street from, most people we know, yes, those are superficial, surface-only relationships. We don't have the time or the energy to make every relationship heart-to-heart. -heart. That's understandable. But Paul reminds us that on occasion, we do have to let our guard down and let people in our hearts and lives and them into and let us and them let us into their hearts and lives because therein lies the source of joy in our life too many people go through life and uh, never let anybody in they keep everybody at an arm length distance they never open their heart to a single person we all know people like that. They're usually in a bad mood and very grumpy. And I was thinking also, when I took some training to uh, become a better interim pastor, you know, interim pastors are designed to go to a church one year or two years. I took this training and one of the leaders of this training told us that as an interim pastor, never get close to the congregation. Never get beyond the superficial because you're going to be gone in a year or two. Don't, don't, uh, don't get close to them. Keep them at an arm length distance. And I heard him say that and I thought to myself, I don't know about that. And then when I had my own law office and had to hire employees, other lawyers told me, don't get close to your employees. If you hire them, one day you're going to fire them. Don't get close to them. Don't ask about their spouses. Don't ask about their kids. Keep it professional. And the more I thought about that, as interim pastor, don't get close to anybody. As an employer, don't know your employees. I say hogwash to all that. I don't think that's good advice at all. And I bet you Paul would agree with what I'm saying. The people we work with and interact with on a daily basis let them into your heart. Know them on a personal level. Become friends with them because that's where our joy comes from. And yes, from time to time it'll hurt when they leave or we leave. And yes, uh, on rare occasion we'll be betray betrayed, you know, maybe by somebody. But the positives far outweigh the negatives be able to be a person that has an authentic, true, heart-to-heart -heart relationship with others. Therein lies our joy. I'll tell you a quick story. You know, speaking of having my own law office, I had my law office for three years, and all three years, there was a young guy that worked with me part-time. He started out as a high school senior, then through college, and over those three years, I got to know him very well. Him, his girlfriend, now his wife, his family. I got to know uh, his favorite sports teams, you know. He got to know my family, Lisa, the kids. And even though other lawyers said, don't get close to people you work with, I didn't take that advice. Not at all. We became very good friends, actually. And so when it came time for me to close my law office, to go into full-time ministry, I had enough work lined up. He could have worked two more years part-time, just finishing up those things. And I told him, you could work here two more years if you want. But he gave us two weeks notice and got a new job and left. And that kind of hurt me, you know. I got close to him. I let him into my heart. It's sort of like dropping your kid off at college and you drive away, you have that sinking feeling that, oh man, 
you devote your heart to somebody and then now you're not going to see them anymore. And I sort of moped around for two weeks. But you know what? To this day, he's now 30 years old. We still stay in contact. His joy is my joy. He watches these recorded services. We're still very good friends. And by giving part of your heart to somebody else and vice versa, we get the joy we can never find by keeping everybody at arm length distance. So I think our challenge today is this, friends. If, uh, whether it's this church, if you're viewing this and you belong to a different church, this works the same way. As Paul wrote to a church he founded, he wrote uh, to them about the authentic relationships they had and what joy it brought them. So it should be for us in our church relationships as well. There's a lady I know that's in a different presbytery who's been an elder at her church for a long time. And I was talking to her one day about her church and she said, Charlie, I want to tell you something. She said, my church is dysfunctional. She said, I am more likely to get help from a stranger on the street than from somebody I've been sitting in the pews with for the past 40 years. And I thought, that's sad. Should not be that way. Paul's church wasn't. And so our challenge is this, I'll give it to you. As you attend First Presbyterian of Glasgow, or your church. There's people you walk past every Sunday. You know their name. You kind of know where they might live. Uh, you may know something about them, but it's superficial. It's just on the surface. Let's make an effort. Find that one person you worship with, just one, that you don't know very well, and open your heart a bit to them and say, here's who I am. Tell me about you. Let's be friends. Let's know one another. Let's go beyond the superficial. Because I know in my experience, if I ever needed help, I'm going to call Chadwick. He'll help me. I'll call Jackson. He'll help me and has. I'll call Sheila and Larry. They'll help me. Uh, I'll call Dennis and Alan. They'll help me. I insert your name here. You'll help me because you've gone beyond just the superficial. You bring me great joy in my life. Paul reminds us today, that's how we're designed to be, especially as, as people of Jesus Christ. Yes, the world around us may be superficial on the surface only, but those that we worship with, let's take the time to get to know them. Take it to a deeper level. And yes, it'll hurt if they move, or we move. But what we get out of it is so much more valuable than what we give up. We'll receive a joy, a joy that no one else has, a joy that comes from knowing Jesus Christ, a joy that comes from knowing one another, not just on the surface, but heart to heart. Let us pray together. We thank you, Lord, today for the words of the Apostle Paul, for the reminder that the folks we worship with are designed to bring us great joy, that, that our relationships with one another are designed to make our life so much better enriched. Give us today the vision to find that one person, just one, that we walk past every Sunday. Yeah, we may say good morning, and that's about it. But to find that one person and get to know them better on a deeper level, heart to heart. And in doing so, we're the ones that receive the benefit of being enriched by that joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, here we are back in the sanctuary from being outside and uh, glad to 
Had my friend Chadwick rejoin me by the Advent candles here. It was nice to be outside. It's a beautiful day today. It was a great day. Had, had to take advantage of it by getting outside and filming the sermon. Right. Welcome to Kentucky. <laughs> That's right. Tomorrow it's in the be. 50s today yeah. and 12 tomorrow. So I was tomorrow, knows? sunshine today. So we took, we took advantage we of it. We were glad to take advantage of it. I hope you all enjoyed the, hope they enjoyed the sermon. The I, sermon was wonderful. And it reminded me, even in the last couple of weeks, I spoke with uh, a friend of mine, and that individual happened to mention that she had been going to a particular church for 30 some odd years and really didn't know anyone very well. And she even took, I, won't, I, won't, I hate to use the word blame, but you know, sometimes you just don't open up your, you know, you just come in and you get in your seat or at work even, or you know, whatever, on the golf course and you don't open yourself up to anyone, and it's kind of a yeah. humdrum, boring life when you don't invest yourself a little bit in, in other people. That's a good point because it does take two to tango, mm -hmm. that's the saying, and we have to be open to receiving you know, some heart-to-heart -heart relationships and, and giving, so we have to do our part too right. by being receptive to that, and uh, a lot of folks just aren't. I, don't right. know, but, uh, I tried to keep this guy at arm's length for so long, <laughs> right. but the elbow just weakened and weakened. So. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, but we want to close out the, this uh, recorded service. This is the Candle of Peace Correct. Sunday. And so Chadwick has selected a peace theme. Let there be peace on earth, mingled with a few little Christmas tunes, too. Is that so. the hymnal? Not in our hymnal. That's right. But it's it an A-hymn <laughs> somewhere, I'm it should, sure. It should be uh -huh. somewhere. Well, enjoy the last piece, and thanks, Chavik, again Thank for you, Charlie. doing this. Thank you. It's so good to have you back at First Presbyterian Glasgow. Thanks a million. We'll and see you all soon. See you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.